I conclude, therefore, that this star is not some kind of comet or a fiery meteor, but that it is a star shining in the firmament itself one that has never previously been seen before our time, in any age since the beginning of the world. From his observations, he concluded that it Tycho U supernova, was not some kind of comet or a fiery meteor, whether these be generated beneath the moon or above the moon, but that it is a star shining in the firmament itself, one that has never previously been seen before our time, in any age since the beginning of the world. And when statesmen or others worry him the scientist too much, then he should leave with his possessions. With a firm and steadfast mind one should hold under all conditions, that everywhere the earth is below and the sky above and to the energetic man, every region is his fatherland. That the machine of heaven is not a hard and impervious body full of various real spheres, as up to now has been believed by most people. It will be proved that it extends everywhere, most fluid and simple, and nowhere presents obstacles as was formerly held, the circuits of the planets being wholly free and without the labor and whirling round of any real spheres at all, being divinely governed. Under a given law. The body of the earth, large, sluggish and inapt for motion, is not to be disturbed by movement, especially three movements, any more than the ethereal light stars are to be shifted, so that such ideas are opposed both to physical principles and to the authority of the Holy Writ which many time, confirms the stability of the earth, as we shall discuss more fully elsewhere. With a firm and steadfast mind one should hold under all conditions, that everywhere the earth is below and the sky above, and to the energetic man, every region is his fatherland. Behold, directly overhead, a certain strange star was suddenly seen. Amazed, and as if astonished and stupefied, I stood still. The star Tycho U supernova was at first like Venus and Jupiter, giving pleasing effects, but as it then became like Mars, there will next come a period of wars, seditions, captivity and death of princes, and destruction of cities, together with dryness and fiery meteors in the air, pestilence and venomous snakes. Lastly, the star became like Saturn, and there will finally come a time of want, death, imprisonment and all sorts of sad things. It was not just the church, that resisted the heliocentrism of Copernicus. Because the region of the celestial world is of so great and such incredible magnitude as aforesaid, and since in what has gone before it was at least generally demonstrated that this comet continued within the limits of the space of the ether, it seems that the complete explanation of the whole matter is not given unless we are also informed within narrower limits in what part of the widest ether, and next to which orbs of the planets the comet traces its path, and by what course it accomplishes this. When, according to habit, I was contemplating the stars in a clear sky, I noticed a new and unusual star, surpassing the other stars in brilliancy. There had never before been any star in that place in the sky. The mouse is wise, but the cat is wiser. May I not seem, to have lived in vain. It was not just the church, that resisted the heliocentrism of Copernicus. Those who study the stars, have God for a teacher. When I had satisfied myself that no star of that kind had ever shone before, I was led into such perplexity by the unbelievability of the thing that I began to doubt the faith of my own eyes. An astronomer must be cosmopolitan, because ignorant statesmen cannot be expected to value their services. Now it is quite clear to me, that there are no solid spheres in the heavens, and those that have been devised, by the authors to save the appearances, exist only in the imagination. So mathematical truth prefers simple words, since the language of truth is itself simple. <laughs>